All right. Hello, hello, everyone today. Welcome to the Eline Podcast. My name is Mark Rose, and I'm your host with Ellie. And we have our co-host today, special co-host, Elevated and Roberto. How are you guys doing today? Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. All right. We're going to go on some little like icebreakers soon. I want everybody to feel relaxed and good. Um, today, we're going to discuss two of our articles that are posted on elinepodcast.live. Is the workplace coming to an end and how the art world um, shapes our view. So I'm very excited about all of that. So um, just to start off, I'm going to play like a little game. So it's just Hmm, just to see what you feel about everyone around you. So hmm, I'm going to name two things. It's kind of similar to like the true, the two truths and a lie, but I'm just going to name two things and you got to guess which one is like false and which one is true. And I'm going to let everyone like kind of like pick what you want to do first and then we'll go on. Okay. All right, so let's see. Hmm. So what am I lying about? So am I, I'm a, I'm a vegan or am I a, an excessive drinker? <laughs> You're a vegan, you're not an excessive drinker. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I know, I'm just being really like silly right now. I know there's like some like little mediocre questions, but I just want to like lift the mood and I want us all to laugh and everything like that. So um, basically just little small things like that. And I'm gonna go again, cause I'm just really silly today, everyone. And that's Mark Rose for you. So um, let me see, hmm, I want you guys to guess. Mm, let's see, let's see, let's see. What's my, which color do I prefer to wear more out of black or green? What do you think? Black. All right. We're not wearing either, so I'm going to go with black. Okay. Green. <laughs> oh, that's so funny, Ellie, because you're wrong. Elevated Roberto, you guys won. <laughs> I would prefer black. No, green is actually one of my favorite colors. Ellie doesn't know that. But wearing wise, I honestly I don't wear like all black as much as I used to, but that is what I prefer. So that's why Ellie knows. So I've been like, I've been spicing it up a lot lately and things like that. But no, so um Roberto, I want you to play the game. So give us like, I don't know, we're gonna play two sets like I just did. So pretty much just give us two options and we have to guess which one is correct How about you sure um i guess what do i prefer listening to music wise um mm -hmm. rock or pop you prefer rock. to listen to rock that's what i'm thinking <laughs> yeah it's the easiest easiest answer to that <laughs> Wait, Ellie, you didn't answer. You're supposed to be quick. And Roberto, you have to wait for everyone. Sorry. Sorry. I thought he answered. You're I fine. Answer. <laughs> okay. Give us another, another, another pair. All right. All right. Well, this one's going to. Okay. Um... Okay. Off the top of my head, uh... do I prefer board games or video games? You know what? I want to say you prefer. I want it like inside of me. I want to say video games, but I'm gonna go. I'm gonna play the wild card. I'm gonna go with board games. All right, Ellie, elevate it. I don't know. I think you give me old school, so maybe board games. I don't know. That's what I want to say too. But I'm gonna go with video games just to go, okay, go the so other way. Yeah, two board games, <laughs> and we have one video games. What is the answer, Roberto? I'm a retro gamer myself, so video games, but definitely. I'm screaming. Mm. At least I was, at least <laughs> side, I was kind of right. I just wanted to be funny and go into the world. <laughs> okay. I, I just like older consoles. Really? Okay. Mm. All righty. So elevated. How about you? Your turn. Okay. Um, let's say, would I, am I more of a plant mom or a dog mom? 
Ooh, that's a good one. Plant mom. All right. Plant mom. Everybody said plant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Y'all right. Yeah, all right. <laughs> you just look like a plant mom. <laughs> Ooh, what's your favorite? What's your favorite like plant? Do you have like a favorite plant? I honestly only have one plant, and his name is James. He's a ZZ plant. It's really easy to grow, really easy to take care of. Yeah, I've had him now since 2020. Really, I love that. Yeah. And I love how you gave the plant a name, James. I love that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. What's your next one? Oh, okay. 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 Do I prefer to read or write? Mm. Right. That's what I'm going to go with. Read. It's right. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Next time, I, we need to like do some scoring and stuff like that. But bear with us, everyone. Bear with us. But this is fine. Okay. Okay. I see. All right, Ellie, you're next. Mm, I was thinking the whole time. I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Everyone listening, I kind of threw this on everyone. We were going to like do a little something else, but at the last minute, I had to change things. I was like, you know what? We're just going to switch it up a little bit. I just want to be a little frisky. <laughs> So think um, of something. What's my favorite color, orange or navy blue? Navy blue. Orange. Orange. It's navy blue. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, it was orange. It was orange, though. Um, OK. Let me think. Um, Am I a dog mom or a cat mom? Cat. Dog. Dog mom, I'm assuming. <laughs> I know the answer to this. <laughs> yes, yes, poodle mama. Poodle. <laughs> My oodle. But one day, like we've talked about this, you're going to have a um, cat one day. Cause... Well, absolutely. I'm the cat right now. Yeah, you're... I like that. You're the cat right <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah. I'm the cat right now. I like that. Okay, okay, everyone. Okay. We got some little giggles and everything like that. Um, I just wanted us just to laugh and things like that because um, of course, um me and Ellie know each other. Um, we've also talked with Roberto and Elevated, as you will see on the podcast. We interviewed them before. So we are kind of acquainted, but I know this is the first time that Elevated and Roberto are getting to know each other. So I just wanted something just to like give some laughs and such like that. But we're, we'll like, I think I want to like add some more questions in, but um, I just want to ask, how is everyone doing today? Like, uh, where is everyone at today? How are you feeling? At peace. Peace, I like that. Mm-hmm. Calm, relaxed. Um not as uh stressed as i as i should be well no i'm just keeping it um at a regular level i guess uh, okay i got you well it's it's always good when you're like not you know stressed of course or as stressed you know this whole experience of life is something else you know and i feel like we go through our highs our lows we're always going to have good days we're always going to have bad days in betweens and you just, just want everything to go right. Yeah. No meal. And it will. You know, it's just you got to keep your eye on the prize, keep your mind straight and just it will. It's hard some days. It's hard some days. You know, I get it. But just keep your eye on the prize. That's all you can do, you know. And like from like what I've seen of you, Roberto, online and as well as the last time we've talked, you have so many great things ahead of you and in store for you. So just don't forget any of that, you know. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, also, yeah, I'm going to have to send you um, Elevated's podcast. Like, let me tell you, Elevated has a podcast, which Elevated, I want you to inform the audience on. And um, you post right every Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays are the three days mainly, right? Because that's when I always check it out. And I can have like a day, I'll put that podcast on. And when I tell you, you speak to me and my soul, and I'm just like, and it just always comes at the right time you know thank you I appreciate y'all 
Yeah, yeah. So Elevated, what's going on with you and like the podcast, what's going on with you in general, yoga, like just tell the audience, give us like a description, like let us know what's going on with you and who you are. Give us like a little introduction of who you are, please. Okay. Um, I've been podcasting now for a little over four years. I've been writing for a long time. I self-published two poetry books, Balance Expressions Volume 1 and Balance Expressions Volume 2. The name of the podcast is called The Elevated Podcast. It was just to share love, to spread peace and positivity, and just to give a word of encouragement for anybody who may just be experiencing life as we all are. Um, Right now, I'm in the midst of a transition, just changing some things about myself. I'll be changing my location soon to get a different experience on a different part of the world <laughs> mm. and, um, yeah um currently right now home in South Carolina and just uh I've been just going through the goals and flowing with the flows and yeah. balancing through all of it just just living life experiencing it in the way that it's presented to me also in the way that I created as well Mm. love to hear that you know always wishing you the best with everything and all your future endeavors your current endeavors I feel like we all have to appreciate the now and you know we have like you know goals passions things in the future that we look forward to but the now is important you know and Mm -hmm. I love that I love that thank you and uh, Roberto what do you have like going on right now like what's new with you since the last time we talked with you well, um, I've been trying to get this short off the ground. Uh, well, short as in the first four pages of the script that I'm trying to get uh, made into a film. Um, it's been getting delayed for numerous reasons, but uh, I think we have a, a date locked down for the 27th. So a couple of days after a few days after Thanksgiving, hopefully if everything goes right, we'll be filming it and then have it ready by mid to late December. I don't know how long it'll take to edit, but once that's done uh, and we spread it out and I could try to get it, spread the word about the, the film itself. Okay. And is this like the um, short that you mentioned before? Yes. That was- Congratulations. Be- yeah. Congrats first. Yeah. But is this the short that you mentioned that has like the animations in it or is this a different one? Or- This is the first, uh, like, it's the opening scene of my film, Figmental State. Yes. Um, should I talk a little bit about it to those who don't know? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, that's what I want you to do. Like, um, yeah, like for like like new audience members and everyone who's listening who has sure, been sure. to you, like, let us know well, who, are, who are you, like, what do you do and everything? Well, I'm a filmmaker myself. Uh, I've been since since high school. It's been a very long time. Uh, so I've been making short films for quite some time since high school and college. Um, uh, right now, I'm trying to get a feature off the ground uh, a, a script that I wrote back when I was 19. And I have not touched until I was 30 or 29, I should say. And uh, I rewrote it, rewrote it until I was happy with it. And now I'm, I'm ready to actually go out and make it. But um, so I could try to get some financing. Uh, I want to take the first four pages, the opening scene, and turn that into a short as like a proof of con- like a proof of concept, and see if I could try to get um, financing that way. So, just real quick, Figmental State is about um, it's about a teenager, homeschooled, isolated, overprotected. Mom's very overprotected. Dad's more supportive, and uh, he only has an imaginary friend to talk to but uh, suddenly he has that urge to want to go out into the world and try to maybe meet someone, anyone to to have a personal connection with, even though his mom's fears are kind of on him about how like, you know, people are uh, overrated and you're going to get hurt and all that stuff, even though it's all part of growing up. But he meets a girl who um, is, uh, has her own problems, you know, has similar problems, And uh, they form an awkward relationship, like a friendship. They fall in love and the imaginary friend grows resentful, jealous, and all of the fears kind of just come back projecting onto him. So it's like a, a battle with himself. 
Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I remember you like talking about that the last time we um spoke with you, and I'm like really excited about that, and I'll definitely be well, we will definitely be checking that out and like following you up with that because it's, I don't know, I'm just very just excited whenever I hear someone just going after their passions, their dreams. This is something that you've been working on for like a while, something that you've had in your mind. And this is like just the beginning. So just look at it as the beginning. And yes, you may have like some little hurdles, things like that, that may come into place, but don't ever let it knock you off track, you know? Yeah, I've also sent you guys the GoFundMe link. Uh, if I need to send it again, yes. I can totally do yes, that. Yes, <clears throat> yes. Yes, send that again. Send that again, for sure. sure. Okay, okay. All righty. So um, I am ready to get into, like, the articles. I'm very excited to hear your opinions sure. on, like, the two articles that we have. Well, there's sure. two recent ones. Um, but I want to let you guys, let you all decide which one you want to start off with. I was more interested in the other one, the other one about how like art shapes are. Um, yeah. Video. So which one? Yeah. So Ellie and Elevated, which one were you both like more interested in? I think both are interesting topics, but um, the art one is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I the feel art. that. I feel like as as we are all creators, definitely yeah. the one that... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I felt that. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like asking that question because I feel like us having like the podcast, having two different articles that we're discussing, I think sometimes hearing like which one you all kind of connect more with kind of lets the audience also know like who you are and what you connect with in your energy. And yeah, and then we'll go to the other article. But okay, so we're going to start with that. Um, if you guys want to like scroll, look around, that's fine. So we're going to start off with how art creates our worldview. So first of all, like, let's talk about art. What do you like? What do you all consider art? Anything that that gives you a connection or an emotion, anything that you relate to, it doesn't even have to be film. It could be music. It could be paintings or um, mm -hmm. poetry, literature, stuff like that. Cool. Do you have like like a certain art form that you enjoy the most? Besides film? Yes. <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> no, film and music, I think, are my biggest ones. Have you ever ventured into music, Roberto? Not personally. I just I'm a listener. I, I've uh I don't think I could write music even if I tried. Really? I think elevator probably could write music. Elevator, you mm -hmm. I mean elevated, you are like a phenomenal writer. So, Thank you. You find out you're gonna write some little tunes for me one day. <laughs> 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 All right, yeah, but what do you can like? Um, like, what do you what do you consider art? Did you answer that? I did. And art is art is life. Art is expression. Um, mm -hmm. art can literally be anything. We are art, you know, because we have our own makeup. We have our own unique identities like there's just so much about us we're so dynamic so we are living expressions of art yeah Great. i love that so um in the article was there anything that struck out to you all that was different or anything that you felt like you've learned something that you feel like hey i didn't know this before or i didn't think about this did it like expand your mind because I no. know that, like an article, it mentions like the many forms influencing like the five, you know, senses like music, visuals, dance, songs, food, etc. So I don't know. I just feel like it opened my mind in different ways. How about you all? Well, this is something that I've thought about for a very long time because um, art, particularly um, the things that we're exposed to a lot, uh, movies, literature, and music, I think are the biggest three, and um, whatever we find ourselves attached to or like emotionally and stuff um even stuff we hear on the news and stuff it's just um like whatever we connect to that's what we're going to um grasp onto like everything that it says or what it's about or or what the moral is um 
you know, and if it connects to what we already know about ourselves or how we see the world, you know, we're this it's just something we're gonna hang on to. Right, right, right. Okay. How much you elevated? Was there anything that struck out differently to you or anything like that when you read the article? It was it's more confirming like I can relate to the article a lot more now from where I am now because as a kid I looked at art as just what we learned in school like going to art class you know like I didn't see it in the way that I see it now I didn't I didn't understand it how I understand it now so it's just it was a very confirming article for me that aligns with where I am now right right and I just feel like art is very important. And I feel like there are so many different forms and it really does shape our worldview, you know, because you have exactly. media, you have like film, you have music, you have writing. There is so many different forms of art. Even cooking is a form of art, you know? Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's very important because it just shapes like who we are. It shapes how we view people as we see the mm-hmm. different new way. Because, you know, like Roberto, you love film. Uh, elevated you love writing you also do yoga but you know you love writing is one of your big biggest things as well and I feel like it's expression you know and that's something that's important to me and I feel like I'm an artist as well so I feel like everything is expression you know Mm -hmm. so um no I love that so yeah I'm just scrolling like a little bit I'm just trying to um test your brains a little bit because I know it mentions that you know art is something larger than an individual, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, as you know, they already mentioned, it's like the expression of society from that time period it was created in, you know? It's even bigger than the artists uh, themselves. That part, exactly. Mm. Do you guys have like any favorite like artists? Like who's your favorite artist? It doesn't matter like whether they're like a music artist, uh, um, film, whatever. Do you have like a favorite artist? This is going to be the most cliche answer, but I can't help it. Uh, Steven Spielberg was my introduction to film as a child. And since then, that's what's uh, that's what who I've been following. So that's who I've kind of clung on to in forms of art and inspiration. Oh, wow. What is your favorite Steven uh, Spielberg film? Probably Close Encounters. Close Encounters. Oh, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a really good one. Yes, yes, yes. And I love that because I just feel like, you know, just like for me, like I love film, you know, like I love acting. So it's like when I watch like a certain film or like certain films, I know they just resonate with me and they leave lasting impressions on me. And I feel like I can have a moment in life to where I'm in a grocery store, I'm driving or I'm just like at work or something. And then I just have like this moment and I just think about a film or something or something I learned from a film because um like Ellie, I know Ellie loves Eat, Pray, Love. And I feel like that's a beautiful movie because I feel like Eat, Pray, Love really, it's, it's a whole experience and it's, it's a whole like mental and how do you explain it? It's like, a, I just feel like the movie is very good for your soul, basically, not just mentally, right. but your soul, you know? Mm. Like yeah. comfort food. Yes. Yeah, pretty much. That's- <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. How about you, Elevated? Do you have like a favorite artist? I have, I don't have one favorite. If I name one, then I feel like I'll have to name myself. I'm like my biggest fan. I'm the type of person where there, there are things like, a lot of people may not know this about me, but there are like um, writers that we are all known that, that are, that know, that we are all aware of, that we all know and I have not read some of their work because I'm the type of person where I don't want to be influenced by what somebody else is doing and how they did it. I want it to all come from me. I'm really big on everything coming from me. So it's just like some of the the greatest artists or writers that you can name and I don't know all of their work or I haven't really studied their work or read it read any of it just because I'm I'm really in on me and I don't know if that's I don't know if that's like the best thing honestly but it's just like (laughs) no no that is good no I feel like I've never heard anyone 
explain that whole situation you just explain because it's in my, it's in my head a lot mm-hmm. because it's like that's how I am too because I feel like we all have you know inspirations we have people we look up to people who inspire us in different ways and my thing is like okay yes I'm inspired by different forms of you know people entertainment artists things this that and the third but I want to make sure that I'm always being me and I want to make sure that whatever I do and I, and however I express myself, I want it to come from myself, you know, mm-hmm. me, you know? and it's okay. Like we're always, always going to have people who influence us <laughs> in different ways, but it's also being influenced by them being them, which I feel like inspires us to be who we are, you know? Right. That- yeah. 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 I, I do want to, I do want to shout out some artists though, like some musicians that I absolutely love. Yeah. Mala Esoteric is one. There's Divine. There's Miyagi Sun. There's Scatino. Chastity London. These are people that aren't mainstream. However, their work, their art, what they create and put into their music is impactful. Like it just feels good to listen to it. It's a reminder. It's a confirmation. Sometimes it's a reflection. Like I love listening to those people. So I got to, I do got to shout out some people. You feel me? I got to shout out Mark Rose. You know, like (laughs) I have to shout out people that I know. Like it it feels good. Really? (laughs) Right. You know what? Thanks for that. I love that. And how you say people that you know, because I feel like um, we all need to like be inspired. Oh, well, hello, Ellie. You okay? <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I just saw you pop up. But no, so um, going back to what I was saying is I feel like we are all as <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're just having a good little kiki over here on the podcast, on the Elon podcast. Ellie just like popped up like no other. I'm trying to talk. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> but no so Ellie we were talking about um artists how we're like inspired by you know uh different artists and like elevated me like made a really good point about how she always wants to be herself and yes yeah, she's like you know influenced by artists this that and the third but she wants to always express herself and I was like hey I always think about the same thing you know and I've never heard anyone explain it like that but um what I was saying is also thank you because um elevated was naming um some um, artists that she knows and I feel like we need to give people who aren't fully big 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 all the time their flowers you know because I feel like you know and and I'm really big on that it's like we need to give each other our flowers while we're here and I like that you're doing that elevated because yes we can easily name you know mainstream artists but you know we got to do we got to do and we got to give people their flowers so um Ellie with that being said like Let's talk about with you, how does art shape your worldview? Everything. I mean, I, I feel like, you know, like I'm a late bloomer when it comes to like life, the big SEX and everything. So um, I was much older than a lot of people when things came into play. So um, art was everything to me. I think it kind of gave me this overly sappy idea of romanticism that I had expectations of which I still do and I think that's fair everything everyone has a right to you know I feel personally art set forth the idea of me creating the greatest love story of all time before I leave this earth Mm. that's what art did for me and I mean that and I want that and I deserve that that's a beautiful mindset yes yes I love that um, hell yes you deserve hell yes oh for yeah. sure can yeah I, can i curse my bad do what you gotta do this is the one podcast you want yeah. you to be comfortable do your thing because trust me i have to sometimes because yeah. like, they the birds be wanting to come out <laughs> but i don't want to say too much <laughs> oh my gosh no I think I have a faulty expectation of life sometimes with art like a faulty expectation of how I feel like people should have responded to me. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I was misunderstood a lot. So, but all in good fun. I just think that, you know, we live and we learn and um, I wish the best for everyone. You know, I think that life is beautiful and so short. 
Yeah. I think yeah. life is too short to uh, focus on the negative, you know, because mm-hmm. it just sounds depressing. If we focus on the things that we love, I think we're going to have a much better time while we, while we can. Absolutely. I agree. I agree with that, Roberto, because that's, um, I always tell people when I have like my hard moments in life to where, especially in the past to where I'm like, hey, this human experience, sometimes I'm like, huh, I don't know if I want to continue with this because this is a lot. But then I think about everything that I've always wanted to do, everything that I currently want to do that I know I'm going to do and it inspires me me just being an artist, all the things that I look up to, that I look forward to, because I was talking to a friend the other day and we were talking about art and just us and just being us and our beings. And I was like, you know, I remember some of the things that I've done within the last, let's say just three years, even now currently, I've always wanted to do when I was younger, you know? And I didn't, and even though this is a, a different scale, but I see that everything is developing little by little as I continue to be persistent and consistent with um, my actions, my thoughts, and my passions. And this is what has to keep us going. So to anyone listening to this, just remember like when you're having a hard time, you're having those thoughts to where you're like, oh, this whole human experience right here is a lot. Just remember all those things that make you happy, you know, and focus on those because we can easily focus on the negatives so easily. Mm-hmm. We can so easily get into the to the negatives, but we got to remain grateful. And mm-hmm. I agree who we are and what we want to do, you know. <clears throat> and also I was looking at the article and I it was interesting how it says, you know, the ego can't exist in creativity, but only in replication. I don't know, it's like a few sentences in here that really made me think like the purity evokes the emotion of the participant engaging with the art form, igniting your senses in ways the monotony of life holds you. A world without art is purely primal experience, a meaningless flow of survival. You might just have astral projected to Mars. Yeah, yeah. So it's interesting. And I, I I can talk about art all day, but we are going to take like um a little break and then we're going to go into is the office workspace coming to an end. So does anyone have any like final thoughts of discussion on um how art creates our worldview? I think I have something I'm just trying to word it properly. Um, I, when I was saying that the that the the art sometimes is bigger than the artists themselves is because uh, when when the artist creates uh, they're using their mindset their experiences and whatnot but when somebody um, embraces it wholly sometimes they're not even thinking about the artist they're just seeing what's what's on paper or what's on screen or what's what they're listening to and it no longer becomes that artist's work it has a life of its own and that goes for a lot of things as well so you know, those things um, might be there for, for years to come uh, for the things that we still remember today. And whether or not the artists have remembered themselves, uh, they should be considered lucky that they were able to create something that other people are, are, um, are happy with. Yes, I agree. Cause it lives on, like you said, it lives on, you know, whether it's positive or negative, it doesn't matter. You know, if somebody enjoys it, that that's, that's really all that matters. Mm-hmm. I agree because uh, I feel like a lot of people don't understand that like you may not like it you may not understand it but someone else does like it someone else understands it this art is helping inspire someone else to be their greatest self you know and if it's a like bad that. movie but it's your guilty pleasure you have the right to enjoy it yeah yes I agree I like that I love that Art is a beautiful thing. And I feel like we're all artists in different ways and art is expression, you know? And us just being us, we all shape this worldview of us just being us, us being natural walks of art and life, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, okay, guys, so I wanna like, uh, thank you. That was really nice talking about art. I can go on and on, but um, we're gonna take a quick break and then we're gonna go into the next article, which is, it's the, office workspace coming to an end, which is very interesting. So I'm excited to talk about this. Okay, everyone. 
All righty, all righty. We are back from our little break and on to the next article. And I am your host, Mark Rose, with Ellie, Elevated, and Roberto. So welcome back. And now we're about to discuss the next article, which is, is the office workspace coming to an end? And um, I thought this was like interesting from the get go when we were talking about it, because <laughs> which it does briefly mention um, the 2020 pandemic, because you got to think about this. I feel like right now in the space that we are in right now, it's just it's a lot different than the past few years ever since the pandemic, because I feel like a lot of people are now switching from, you know, stable office jobs to now working online you have more content creators you have more people just mm -hmm. working online in general even like from like their standard jobs you know like a lot of people during the time i remember hearing like um in 2021 at least well the end of 2020 but 2021 um a lot of jobs are like hey you know we're just transitioning to online like to this day i know people who um have been working at you know certain jobs for like let's say like 20 years and then they're still working online now since the pandemic you know when they made that transition so like posing that question of is the office workspace coming to an end i want to ask you all like what are your opinions on that because i know we all of course read the mm. article, but like generally even before reading that what was your opinion on that like do you think that the world is shifting to like more so digital because we have NFTs and this, that, and the third. Or like, what do you think? And whoever wants to go first, it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, I don't have experience working in an office. Um, mostly what I did during the pandemic was um, deliver food, either through Instacart or oh, really? uh, pizzeria, something like that. So I would do grocery runs for people who can't leave the house. <clears throat> And I feel like that's been going on even before the pandemic. But now that um, since everyone's kind of switching over and it's more convenient that way, uh, it's just become uh, a necessity mm -hmm. for many people, especially me, because like um, people needed food during the pandemic. So my job didn't really go anywhere. I became uh, an essential worker. Mm -hmm. And so I was. For better or worse, I was considered a hero because, you know, people needed pizza when, yes. when, they, when they couldn't leave the house and, and not dying of boredom. Right. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, like, I do want to, like, go into that as well. Like, how was, like, all of your, like, pandemic experiences? Like, Elevator, how was your pandemic experience? It was... It was very interesting because in the best way possible, in the best way possible for me, because it allowed me to really sit with myself. It, it <clears throat> broke up so much. It held me so accountable. Like that's really what happened throughout the pandemic for me. It came into accountability. It came into discernment, like realizing who I have around me, what it is that I'm doing, all of the choices that I'm making really got highlighted during all of that. So it was, it was, it was, it was good for me in the best way possible in that aspect when it comes to healing and growing and evolving. And then in another way, there was so much that changed and there was Every single where you go, there were different mandates. There were different requirements. And I didn't like how there wasn't one thing unison anywhere. Literally, in one state, it's this way. You drive over to Georgia, it's completely different. You know, it was, I didn't like how there wasn't any unison amongst what the regulations or the mandates or what's happening. So a lot, honestly, I, I experienced so many different aspects of it it was it was wow it's, it still is it still is wow no. um, you like consistency it's just, yeah i i prefer that i prefer the consistency yeah i love that i love that the consistency i feel like we all learned something from that you know and it's like we had that time to like he'll go through our thoughts see how we felt about things how we feel currently and in our futures you know and I feel like confinement, that was, that's a big word, I guess, the kind of mm -hmm. like 
describe. I feel like a lot of us now don't want to be as confined to whatever it may be that had us confined back then. And then the pandemic really showed us that, you know, it's, oh, yeah. like, mm-hmm. it's just like with like the workspaces, it's kind of like, how will the world live if we, how different would it be if everything is mostly digital, you know, besides like, like you said, Roberto, how you were like technically during the pandemic an essential worker in terms of like getting food and things like that for people. So I feel like that's always going to be, of course, that's always going to be something that's not going to be like digital, of course, because we got to eat. We can't eat digital food. <laughs> yeah. Not yet. <laughs> uh, we usually not yet. Right. <laughs> yeah. Never know. Right. In the world. Right. right. Um, I was over here about to be like, okay, I want a pizza. Um, How much is it digitally? Um, <laughs> like, how does that work? Literally, let me let me see the chip in your arm. Let me go ahead and give it to you. Know what I'm saying? Oh, girl. You know, <laughs> that like back was it like in Back to the Future to where um, it was like they had like the I don't know if it was microwavable, but they had that chip or something. Then the food just popped up. That would be cool. yeah. It was like a it was like a very small pizza and and it was hydrated and it looked like a regular pizza or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is funny. Yeah, how how that still is not a thing yet is beyond me. (laughs) (laughs) I think the pandemic for me kind of like put my brakes on everything. Like, well, that wasn't me. But I think for Eli, it was like a big brake pumper. Um, And, you know, Lativa said it was a lot of like sitting with yourself and accountability. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that yeah, just kind of hit me right in the juggler. <laughs> it's like you put yourself into rehab. Right. That's what it felt like. A rehab that you couldn't check out of until the world decided to check out of it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. Oh, gosh, yeah, the pandemic. After the pandemic, the after the pandemic, or I guess technically we're like still going through like a lot of stuff. But when I say after the pandemic, but when I say after the pandemic, I'm talking about more in terms of after like the initial lockdown is what I'm saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just feel like it was just so. And then once people started going back to like work, and that's one thing to talk about when it comes to like, is the office workspace coming to an end. And then it's like, when you like, if you have that break, once you go back to work, it's like, oh, that was like, was it nice? Or was it not nice? Did you miss <laughs> being like, oh, do you miss like being stuck in the house? Like, you know, it's just so mm-hmm. much that we can talk Depends about. Depends on who you are. Are you extroverted or introverted? Do you like being around people? Would you rather work by yourself? Right. This is true. This is true. Yeah. Like, what would you all consider yourselves? Like, introverts, extroverts, or ambiverts, which are like a mixture between both? Yeah. Probably definitely well, um, a mixture. Yeah, mixture. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's like, I like being around people, but when in terms of work, I'd rather be on my own because I I trust myself to know what's going, what I'm doing. Okay, if so that makes any sense at all. Basically, like in school, um, you didn't want to like have to deal when you were like, you know, when you have like the group, they like assign you like a project, and then you have certain people they assign a project um to, and then you're stuck with like these four or five people, and then it's like you got to get it done, but you're just like, oh, I don't want to work with these people. Was that you? Yeah, somewhere on the, I was the quiet one. Mm. I feel that I'm like yeah. that ambivert. Like, and I always ask people this as well. Do you feel like, even though like we're ambiverts, I feel like sometimes we are still kind of more inclined to either be an introvert or extrovert. <laughs> I do not feel that way. Are do you? Yeah. I feel like yeah. I talk and like I do enjoy human interaction and stuff like that, but. I'm like a natural introvert. And when I say that, not in a bad way, it's not like about mm-hmm. people. It's just, I like being in my head. And I guess I grew up as an only child, but also being an artist, I feel like a lot of artists too, like we're like naturally in our heads, you know, too. Like, so I like being in my head and it's not that I don't like the human, like I love the human experience, but I like being in my head and knowing mm-hmm. how, what I got going on. <laughs> yeah. Most of the times I'm in my own little world, like, yeah. and that's, I'll say there's a balance because it depends on my mood. Mm-hmm. And then it also depends, uh, it depends on who I'm around, you know, like 
energy is real big for me and sometimes the energy just is not right like dang like i want to be outside but i don't want to be outside with you you know it's like sometimes yeah. it's like that yeah like <laughs> if you're gonna be out with something or it'll be your like your book your music or like a sandwich something you know or something to keep you comfortable mm-hmm. right yeah yeah no i love that oh, uh, listen, you consider yourself more of like an ambivert uh, introvert extrovert yeah, which one yeah which one depends on who i'm talking to like i love it said it's all about energy <laughs> basically what we were just saying if i want to be outside because like i said i could be want to be outside but if i don't want to be outside with you <laughs> yeah it Dep- depends on the person it depends on the person yeah and the vibe it's got to be a very mm-hmm. specific person too mm. yeah yeah oh my gosh you guys are fun <laughs> i love it i love like, it you know, let's like dig into that a little bit more so what's the difference between someone you have a crush on or someone stalking you so like for example i'm, I'm saying this because it's, it's like a funny thing i was talking to him about <laughs> mark about months ago and it was just like i was thinking hypothetically i was like um so if you, someone who had a crush on you or stalked you if they literally just came to your door rang the doorbell right now like if you had a crush on them if they if you had a crush on them and you open the door you just like why are you here who are like you know, <laughs> you'd be like hey come you know like what's going on but if they were if someone you didn't have a crush on or deem like you wanted to be with you know or you know find attractive too you'd be like ill get away from me before I call the police <laughs> so, <laughs> I am instead of calling Ryan yeah I felt that <laughs> oh, it's just this just the whole human experience is just so funny this is it's like oh my gosh speaking of that like well like we'll, see you know what if you're home working you can like would you say that like if you're home working more as opposed to a physical location that you could like you could like excuse yourselves from like danger i think so um but then you're gonna have another set of problems even at home so i feel like that's um that's not going away but so you like you know you don't have the the worry about certain things when you're outside with people but then when you're inside that that's something else entirely that's another book entirely yeah oh my gosh like so also i think about it like so if like we have more jobs and like everything online do you think that there will be more like cyber cyber crazy people like trying to like hackers more hackers and stuff if we are like working more online as opposed to physical locations do you all think that we're going to have more like cyber stalkers cyber like hackers and things like that absolutely i think it happens uh-huh. every day uh-huh. cyber thieves i think it's just it's definitely I feel like, I mean, you know, I mean, I've been working at home for like two years now and um, you know how it is. Like I told you when I first started applying after during the pandemic, it was like, it went from 40 to 80 people applying to now 4,000 to 8,000 oh. applying. So it's made it harder to even get like the most simple jobs online. Mm-hmm. Uh, so That's somebody- right. And then when you try to start over, it's like, oh, you're overqualified yeah it's so. it's frustrating mm-hmm. yeah. or if all advertisements on work of like you know saying this much pay and then you get in the interview it's like oh it's a this base pay and then the rest is commission and you're like what mm-hmm. oh it's it's a hard knock life right now i think out there in cyberspace mm-hmm. oh, yeah, i never understood that yeah, yeah. I never know. Like, but just reading the article had me just questioning so many things because I'm just like, where is our future? You know, if there are less like physical jobs as we know it, you know, that's what we're used to. And then like the world is constantly changing, evolving, technology is becoming more of a thing to where it's like everything is transferring over to digital. So it's kind of like, how is life going to be if everything is online everything is digital and if we're not doing anything physically if we're not having any like if we're like uh minimizing the physical interactions like i don't know what do you guys think about that 
Well, I feel like a lot of people are, a lot of jobs are going to become obsolete because we're relying so heavily on machines. You know, I mean, I keep hearing about drones and self-driving cars. Yeah. I'm just like, no, me as a, deli- well, as a delivery driver, I'm just like that, that, well, it's not that that's all I have. It's just that like, I, I miss that freedom of just being able to be in the car and listening to music and making sure the food gets there on time. So being uh, relying on something else to do that, it just, I don't know. It just doesn't feel right. I agree. I agree. I had the same thoughts with that too. I feel that like goes well with like, like those, those um, do it yourself machines that you see at the store or even when we rely on, on Amazon rather than going out into the store and getting what we need, you know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's no, why I, I feel like it's important. We like stay away from automation to a degree in our personal lives too much because you lose the togetherness, you lose the oneness, you lose the connection of doing anything if everything's so easy, bake one, two, three, you know? Um, you can't tip a machine. Right. You can't tip a machine. Mm-hmm. And it, I'm not going to say a machine can't love because obviously <laughs> it's stranger than fiction now. Um, I just feel like the love of human energy being put into food, I'm scared of that like of going to a restaurant now and it being completely automated like you made a taco from a machine you made the pizza from the machine it was no like human connection there was no thought energy love put into it because you know people already we're already in america and everybody wants it fast hey, if i may um that that goes the same with i'm not trying to go back to another subject but like even art is starting to become um what we, we seeing this um what's that what's that term like that or AI graphic stuff, you know, so it's like, well, well, we're not going to rely on artists anymore. So what are we going to have left by the time all this is done? I don't think art, what I'm getting from like the whole AI spitting out art and creating art and, you know, from its own idea of what's already existed from humans. I think it's really AI coming into consciousness. I purely think Mm. that I, I think it's AI experiencing the human experience the way it can and oh. send it back to us and i think that ai is like it's already conscious like i mean there's already sophia and there's already like so many talks um about ai already having some type of conscious mind and doesn't like being used the way it's being used by humans mm-hmm. and if that's true then what rights does ai have with us what rights does it have you know is it ai that went on jeopardy or something i didn't see that yet see (laughs) that was a thing i think that was a thing that happened but i'm sorry to interrupt no you're good you're good totally um i think i was done anyway okay (laughs) i just think i have something i like to um to share please do because I've heard um mark say a couple of times the human experience and i just realized how much so much has been taken away from the human experience even so much to where so many people are working in home we don't even get the pleasure of going outside anymore like Mm -hmm. it's like we're not even connected to nature how we need to be connected to nature getting getting you know everything that we need from that and it's just it's, it's taken away so much from us to where it's like, okay, now AI has the consciousness and now we're becoming the robots, you know, like now yes. it's like, now we're not really even thinking for ourselves as we once were. And it, it scares me a little bit because there's, there's not, everyone isn't open-minded. Everyone isn't thinking about it. Everyone isn't having these types of conversations that we're currently having right now. So it's, it's it's it just it's it's like you don't know what's going to come of it we're desensitized to a lot of things or we're starting to become Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. it's it's like we've we've heard everything we could ever hear i guess and like there's nothing new uh coming into the conversation or at least we like to think that when it's not the case Mm. yes 
Oh my gosh. You guys hit some really good points just now with that. Like I, I was literally, I'm just listening and I'm just sitting here. And I'm like, okay, yeah, right. Because it is scary because I feel like like with technology, it is taking us away from like this experience, but emotions and of us connecting with nature. And I feel like nature is so important and we don't need to stray too far away from nature. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like exactly. technology, yes, it needs to be something that helps us like, you know, live a little bit easier. But I feel like a lot of times now everyone, like think about kids, kids don't go outside as much anymore. They just get on, okay. the iPads. They get on their iPads. They want to mm -hmm. record TikToks the whole time. Mm -hmm. They want to post. And then I also feel like that social media, that's one thing too. We all know how that's affecting everyone's brains because there's like images that are being portrayed. I feel like images that are like narratives, not just images, but narratives that are like being thrown out there intentionally. And a lot of us, like you said, elevated aren't aware, are open-minded and just understand what's going on. And that's what's so scary because I feel like we live in a world where a lot of people are just experiencing and taking in the stuff and following it, but not really adding out or questioning too much or yeah. anything different. And that's what's so scary because it's like if majority of the world is taking in all this information, but we're not seeing what's happening around us, then it's like, what are we going to do but mm -hmm. let the world shift the we're way not experiencing life as we should mm -hmm. yeah yeah i agree because mm -hmm. i feel like also with film i'm going to say this real quick um a lot of people will ask me like what are my favorite type of films this that and the third but i feel most at peace when i watch classical films or films that's like the 90s 80s 70s 50s 40s whatever just because of the time of being a lot of the times, so I feel like now with film, I feel like everyone's trying to be very CGI, very technological and some, I don't know, sometimes like that stuff is really cool. I love it, not taking away from that. But sometimes I feel like it takes away from the experience of, I don't know, just feeling like that it's real, that, the, that, that like the story that they're telling that it's, I don't know, that it's real sometimes, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because like, they're yeah. trying to like, technology a little bit too much these days. You know, everything's about technology. And I'm like, hey, can we like slow down and just enjoy two people talking in the diner <laughs> without CGI? <laughs> like my dinner with Andre. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. just 90 minutes of two people talking while having dinner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, but no. You all made like some really valid points and um that I'm really gonna be thinking about even more. But um yeah, it's the office workspace coming to an end. I guess we will see. I guess we will see. I think it's too early to answer that, really. It's too early, but yeah, let's just hope that we all remain connected to nature as much as possible. <laughs> mm -hmm. But also be open minded to, you know, technology and things that are like meant and needed, but for me, I'm just always going to be very like cautious when it comes to certain things with technology because I want to be connected to nature, you know, and connected to myself and the people I'm around, you know, because even with like technology, like, yes, we have like Zoom, we have like virtual chats, we have like FaceTime, this, that, and the third, but like a lot of people don't know this about me, but I would rather hang out with somebody in person than talk on the phone, you know, mm -hmm. rather that because I feel like I'm really connecting with you and your energy and I understand mm -hmm. we're not close to everyone so it is more accessible so I am very thankful for a virtual chat because we can at least get to see the person so that's the pros and cons you know mm -hmm. but yeah but as we um in this discussion do you all have any topics or anything that you want to like know before we um end tonight oh. at least with this article in specific with this the office work place coming to an end i'll say um there are a lot of people who are still showing up you know like there are people who are still going to work there are some people who aren't willing to adapt so yeah i don't see it coming to an end soon however we have you know since technology made its appearance since we started with the computers, you know, the dial up since we, you know, we, we were here when it made its impact. So I feel like we have, they have already been 
preparing us to get used to it, to be that way. And we'll see what happens. I'm always praying for the best, you know, definitely. How about you, Roberto? Well, um, like I was saying, it's a little early to say Mm -hmm. that, you know, that whether the office workspace is coming to an end, but um, I still think that uh, that the offices are not going anywhere. We're still going to, have to go to work there's it's more like a 50 50 thing you know Mm. because i feel like introverts and extroverts regardless um sometimes we feel like we don't have a choice to go or to stay um but i i think it's just it is what it is and uh doesn't uh doesn't help when there's a lot of tv shows that romanticize the office workspace like the office um but so that make it sound more fun than it's than it actually is um, or as cliched as it actually is, but um, I know some people see it as more like a, like a prison than anything. Those who either don't like to work or just don't like that monotony that goes on. Because I've I've heard horror stories about about both sides. Um, but it's it's I don't think that's go- I don't think that's going away, uh, at least not right now. You know. So whether we like it or not, there's there's going to be problems with either being in a open in an environment where we have no choice but to be around people, or being alone in your room with the computer, uh, doing your work. Um, and even if it's not uh, online problems, I mean, you're still living at home. You still have to cook food. You still have to take care of the house. All that stuff. So it, there's going to be things regardless. So whether or not it's going away, I feel like it doesn't matter because uh, each situation has its own pro- set of problems. At least that's how I think. Right, right. Yes, some great points, Roberto, and Elevated. Um, Ellie, do you have anything that you need to say? No, um, I appreciate you guys coming out and doing this with us. I really do appreciate it. We really enjoyed the conversations we had with you, you know, the first go round and I enjoyed watching, you know, your your um, interview with Mark Elevated. And um, I enjoyed our talking, Roberto. Um, the last time we spoke, it's nice to catch up. Um, yeah, we'll definitely probably be doing these more regularly and you, you guys are always welcome to be a regular guest. So you can push your own agenda, what you have going on for yourselves and your creations. And we love the community and connection with y'all. So like, I'm very appreciative appreciate this moment every day oh i'd love to come back yeah definitely yes yes thank you thank Thank you you. thank y'all for for doing what you're doing and and just putting the spotlight on creators having these conversations and just opening the doors thank you for what you are doing i truly do appreciate you i see y'all like how y'all see me i love y'all like how y'all love me i appreciate you all so much Uh, i say likewise thank you thank you thank you you all don't understand how much we really appreciate you you know taking the time out of your day you could have been doing something else or whatever you wanted to do but you took the time to chat with us tonight and the fact that you all are also willing like to speak with us more as we're doing this especially this first go around it's really 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 like you you, you guys don't understand how heartwarming it is and we really appreciate it so thank you so much because we really love everything that we see when we get online and we see everything that you're doing elevated what you're doing with Berto. you all are all destined to greatness and don't ever forget that because just keep on your path don't let anything get in the way it's life, it's the experience. We're gonna have our moments, but we gotta keep our eye on the prize. That's what we gotta do. Mm-hmm. But thank you so much for yeah. showing up and showing out. We wanna thank everyone for listening to us here at Eline with the Eline Podcast. Um, you can check out our latest articles on the Eline Podcast.live. And then also, um, where can we find you both, um, Elevated and Roberto? Where, where can we find everyone? Elevated, you can start. On Instagram and Twitter, I'm living, L-I-V-I-N-G, elevated, E-L-U-V-A-T-E-D. Okay. 
I'm on Instagram. Um, I don't use my Twitter as much, and I'm probably not going to use it anymore. Uh, my I have a website where I put all of my short films on display and where I'm going to update information on Figmental State as well. Uh, it's www.meteorite, M-E-T-E-O-R-I-T-E, dash E-N-T, dot com. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So until next time, keep being great. Keep being yourselves, showing up every day, being beautiful beings and being the best that you can showing up as we all just collectively do this whole human experience thing in these like physical bodies, because it's definitely a journey, but um, we wish you all the best. Thank you for showing up and until next time. Thank you.